All right, so we're, we're going to start off going over the quiz. Unlike the other quizzes, since there was no uh, answer sheet that could be scanned in, I, I don't get any type of formal uh, like data analysis as to what was this the most. So I'm just informal as I grade. Um, nothing really stood out to me. Uh, and you know what? I mentioned to me at first it's played high in fourth grade. Uh, if, if just by writing your name correctly, you got 20 points. Yeah, everybody was given 20 points for free. Uh, then after that, every question was worth 10 points. I, it was at my discretion whether uh, if, if you got full credit, you got all 10 points for the question. I had the authority to give you half credit, which would have been five points. And then if you got it wrong, then you would get no points. The way they do it, know what you were given. Um, is uh, if, if I put an X on my X on the answer column, that's if you got it wrong. If I put one slash or half of an X, right, only one slash, then that's half credit to that question. And then if I left it alone, then you got it right. So if you have, hey, look at it. Partly, and anytime you're awarding partial credit, there is some type of subjectivity to it, as well as before some of the very severe handwriting issues. Do you have a dossier?
And the denominator, like we're trying to rationalize, we want to get rid of the I. Now, we're multiplying conjugates, even though these are complex conjugates, we are multiplying conjugates. So if you want to retrieve it, like we did a few minutes ago, just two different squares, knock yourself out. Go for it, the I will be there, eventually you get rid of the I, and by all of the or the shortcut I showed you, is look, you're going to end up with a sum of squares anyway. So there's your sum. And if you do that, you don't have to worry about the I. You could just square the two that's in front, but then you can't forget, you also got to square the number in front of the I, which is in front of the I. If I can take some liberties here with some steps, uh, I'll go back and show them if you want to see them, but you can just kind of convert a couple steps in one. What is the i squared going to do to that, that 5? It's going to make a negative. It's going to get rid of the i also, because we won't be any more i, but it's going to make a negative. So then what is positive 6 minus 5? Is it become 3 or 1, 6 minus 5? It is 1. We're going to have a 1 in front. Then just like with variables, 3i is 10i, no, plus 13i. And the denominator also makes it like 2 squared plus 1 plus 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 5. If you wrote that, you got half credit. You got that part, that's half credit. Because you were, you were told that with imaginary numbers, you want to write it in complex form, a plus bi, so we have to press with this. 1 can't be divided by 5, so it stays as 1 over 5. Plus, 13 can't be divided by 5 either, so. If you wrote the i on top, that's 13 i over 5, that's fine. <laughs> if I were to ask you now, what's the a value in this, in this um, complex number? What would you say? 1 over 5, what's the b value? It's 13 over 5. If, if we were, uh, one thing that we don't do here is um, graph these on a complex plane. Like, if we were to be graphing these on a complex plane, like the number. Other questions there? This, this here is for full credit. This here is for any other questions? One is that one. Number one. Okay, now with number one, you're subtracting. So, uh, the first parenthesis that doesn't have a negative in front, the number is going to drop down to the zero value. So it stays at negative 9 plus 2i. But for the next one, uh, the 12 becomes positive and the 4i becomes negative. So it's negative. If you got that far right there, I gave you half credit for that. Well, actually, let me rephrase. Maybe you guys can do it. Once you combine these, uh, negative 9 plus 12 is 3, and then um, uh, 2i and minus 4i is minus 2i. So if you have all this, this is full credit. But if for some reason you made a mistake with a step, like you didn't just come up with random, like uh, you know, 7 minus 16i, like, as long as like your numbers weren't completely out of whack, if all you did was somehow mess up a sign, like you put a negative 3 or a positive 2, and then you also had this, so that leads you to believe that your mistake was computational, you made a mistake with something on the calculator or something, then I gave you half credit. But, but it's not just making a mistake with a sign. You have to have made a mistake with a sign, and then also had this line before it, the foil would have to be exactly. Any other questions? Yeah, I'll put a clarity that one. All right, this one should have been a little bit better because I think we don't have to worry about changing the sign as much. I have to start with a draw. 3 plus 4i minus 6 minus 4i. Combine the reals first. 2 minus 6 is going to give us 4. And then we give it the 4i if it's canceled.
Like I saw some real weird ones there. I saw something like uh, it was only two. Uh, you know, there, I don't see those computations. There, you're probably combining in, they're going to be combined. But if, uh, if, if for some reason you thought two minus six was positive four, okay, then maybe I can even find a credit for that. But yes, you can express, right? Numbers four and five? Yeah. Yeah. Four was missed a lot. Um, I don't recall <laughs> the top of my head doing one line from the notes, uh, but it should have shown up on Khan Academy, and this is an obvious one. It is the, like if you miss it, it has nothing to do with the magic number. It's because you don't remember that um, exponents cannot be distributed over subtraction. So what you should have done with number four, when you square a number, what is that the same thing as doing? Yeah, and that's what you would have done in algorithm one. So one minus a max, one minus a max. And then it becomes just like number three. So now when you pour out, it becomes a one minus a max minus a max plus 64 i squared. The i squared turns the 64 into a negative. What's one minus 64? Negative 63. And then we combine the i with minus 63. Same thing with the first two. If, if, I, if here I just saw that you with a positive 63, if, if, if it was just an issue with the signs, I'm willing to give you half credit, but the foil has to be correct. Then five, they usually did do, did a few of these on the notes. Just like with number eight, you're supposed to you want to rationalize the denominator, and when you do so by multiplying by the complex conjugate, what is the complex conjugate of negative? It's positive 3i. Times positive 3i is positive 3i. So that gives me a 6i plus 3i squared over. And the denominator, like if you could write negative 9i squared if you want, or if you were to use the shortcut in the case you could remember, if I were to write the complex, it would be a 0 minus and a 0 plus. Really, what's going to happen is that the 9 is going to become positive, and like all I, all I really need is going to be 3 squared. Okay, you have to end up with a positive sign. The i squared turns the 3 into uh, a negative, so we get negative 3 uh, plus 6i over 9. If you left it like that, I did not give you half credit. Because besides just leaving it like that, you also have to reduce. Now, if you reduce, I gave you half credit. If you wrote uh, negative 1 plus 2y over 3, I gave you half credit for that. But just like with the first one, you need to correct it. You need to separate it into real and imaginary. So this would be negative 1 over 3 plus 2 over 3. That should have been 100% correct. What's the complex conjugate of negative 6 plus 4i? Negative 6 minus 4i. Going for the complex conjugate. Change the sign of the imaginary term. And then in comments over here the day before, I basically gave you the answer for number 6. For number 6, if you want us to factor, right, let's pretend. That that would say minus. Let's pretend that instead of x squared plus 81, this was x squared minus 81. What would that look like in factor form? x plus 9x minus.
But the fact is, it doesn't say minus. That says plus. So what's the adjustment we have to make? It's going to be incongruous. It needs to be complex on our first Motion property of exponents, however, what Oswald was saying was yes, if you are dividing the same base, uh, then what you end up doing to the exponents is subtracting. Now, I tried to show you a kind of a shortcut because what types of numbers could you end up with when you subtract? You could end up with a negative, which now becomes a whole other thing because you, you can't leave a negative exponent if you are asked to simplify, right? So, of course, then I just finished showing that, and somebody comes to ask me for help on Friday with a Khan Academy. I guess I had already started working on this week's Khan Academy. Um, and then Khan Academy, because I think that they, they have special instructions. And then they say, like, like, leave it in the form of, you know, X, I think they put it like that. Or if they want it in an X form of form, or if they want it, if they're giving you those directions, that supersedes anything else. You're going to end up with a negative, you're going to put a negative. Basically, if you're being told to leave it in exponential form, then you're probably better off to do the top minus bottom. And whatever you get, you get. But the, the, the way I showed you, you could end up with it with the base on the bottom. But if you just do the top minus bottom, it ends up this way. And uh, for this example, it doesn't really make a difference because the, uh, the exponent on top is bigger. Anytime the exponent on top is bigger, you're not going to end up with anything with the denominator. So as Oscar said, yes, you can track the common base of x, and then we'll over 5 minus 2. The nice thing about this is that we have common denominator. So we can go to the We have to make a common so we'll be going over time. We have to do all the things. So if you all borrow one of your toes, what you like with minus 2? This were that Khan Academy exercise that they would tell you to do it in, in rational form, in a rational exponent form, you'd be done. The only thing that you have to make sure of is that this fraction cannot be removed, and it can. You definitely need to make sure of that. But the directions here say just to simplify. So we're going to start with 7 foot holding. So for the 
This matter before me as you already got it. The plane is pre printed in Hendel, found in Miami Town, New York Town, County Hill. What was your favorite store from Hendel? I like the store. I think a lot of people like the cake. I used to hate it. Have you seen that they sell like just reds and then just cakes and just go buy them? The other one. So yeah, as Kendall said, simplest radical formula, right? So here you go, this gives us a chance to uh, use the new property group, right? Which is how would I convert this back to a radical? Uh, okay, I like that word index, but what, what you said the nine? Oh, the five, yeah, the five you put the index. <coughs> and now we're done, right? Well, no, because now, now we're in radical form. We are in radical form, but we're going to stay in simplest radical form. So rather than cage, because nobody wants to be caged, we want to be free like a bird. But in order to be free here, well, what groups do we have to get in? Yeah, we need groups of five. Do we have enough X's to form a team of five? No. Yeah, because when I do, how many teams have we got? One. So, look, if you want, in the last period somebody requested it, I don't have a problem doing it. I'll write out the nine X's and then I'll just see me circle five of them. Or can we already start saying, hey, okay, I know we have enough to make one team that's going to come out. And don't forget to write the fifth group because if you write a square root, it's wrong. How many X's stay on either side? Yeah. If I have nine players and five get picked on the team, I need to score the nine. Nine requested. There's more than one way to do this. A lot, a lot of these um, properties of exponents problems, sometimes there's different ways to mix and match the properties if you want a different order. Me personally, my rule of thumb is anytime I see an exponent outside of a parentheses, that's going to get my attention first. Not because it, like, look, on, on the inside I see negative exponents. There's stuff I can do there also. On the inside I see rational exponents, fractions. There's stuff I can do there also. But for me, if, if I see uh, outside of a parenthesis, I don't like this, then I'll get rid What am I allowed to do when I have a, uh, an exponent on the outside of a parenthesis and a fraction on the inside? This group is very good. Like, yeah. 
Um, now, once you distribute, you already have an exponent waiting for you. So what can you do with the power of a power? Well, if it's uh, multiplied. So uh, negative 2 thirds times 15 is negative 10. Negative 1 third times 15 is negative 5. And now we're done, right? We want it done. It's Monday. Why are we not going to? Uh, no, this has nothing to do with the Don't you dare reduce that hill. And on the top. Yeah, we have negative exponents. You can't read negative exponents. So that's a reciprocal property. Now, of course, then the property is that people get confused. And like, let's pretend this is the x would have been negative in front. And then they want to do this property. It has nothing to do with the term, with the exponent. So if the, the exponent is negative, you're going to get the base and change the location. If it's on the top, you move to the bottom. If it's on the bottom, you move to the top. And that's what allows you to make the exponent positive. So this is the one in the pit. And then, and why are you not allowed to reduce any types of exponents? Why, why, why don't you want to? Why don't you want to put the x Yeah, it's different, right? The base is different. Okay, one time. I. And just for fun, I can guarantee you this will be more challenging than anything you would see on the test of the quiz, but this is just making you practice having your data focus. If I see an exponent on the outside of a parenthesis, I guess my attention first. Okay. But there's something a little funky here, too. If you look on the inside, what do we see? That's so radical. We don't like it. So uh, we don't want to mix and match the two. Like either we want all radical or all rational exponents. But since I still have this parenthesis to get rid of, I'm actually going to temporarily turn this back into a rational exponent in case it's actually Friday. I try to do this into your head. Please, yeah, memorize it, memorize it, memorize it. Don't even think. Automatically, you see a square root, it doesn't take less. What is a square root the same as an irrational exponent? Point with the same letter. So, we look for what? The what? Yeah. Okay. So, one half time. Now realize that the x and the y are being taken from the one half. So look, I can probably come up with about a dozen different ways to do this. This could be clear. But I'm trying to navigate and find something that you guys can just follow me along the path. And then you can understand each step. So all I'm going to do first, I'm going to change these parentheses into brackets because I'm about to break the next parentheses on the inside. So this is a change of story. And so on the inside, this is still negative a, and x, and now. Now you could, 
Look, it's being multiplied, right? Just, hey, uh, add the exponent. There's more than one way to do this. Me, personally, I'd like to focus on the exponent drop. I like getting into it. But at the same time, while we need to do when we have multiplication on the inside, because this is just negative 8 times x times this times that. So anytime you're multiplying and you have exponent on the outside, what we do is distribute. Now, because the 8 is negative, There's nothing else that I can do without um, doing the powers themselves. If you got the calculator and you want to put a negative base in two thirds, then I could tell you just by looking at it. So let's assume that you don't have a fancy calculator. I know that any fraction exponent is the same as a radical. I also have a convenient feature here where the denominators are the same. Except you can't the denominators are the same, but that's convenient. Now notice that now that this x has a first power, it doesn't have a fraction of the exponent anymore. But that has nothing to do with the radical. That's going to stay out front now. But now I can have a cube root of what power is the negative eight going to be? Squared. What power is the y going to be? We can go ahead and square negative eight now. And now we're done, right? Yeah, see a lot of people say that's 64 and it's going to do a radical and just in a reaction. Oh, hey! Even worse, some people think that they're putting the topic in the right way and they get an 8. No, if you're getting an 8, you're getting a square root. The cube root of 64 is it is a uh, it is four. <clears throat> if it wasn't a perfect cube, you have to do a tree with 64. Uh, but it is a perfect cube. Yeah, I do get four. That's how it's going to be on the outside and on the inside. So that's how I have it. <coughs> and now we're done. If you can understand that. Alright, so now let's go to the compendium. We're not going to do every single problem here, but we'll try to do like a couple problems in each section, or at least ones that we have to come over today. So this is kind of a refresher on Friday. <clears throat> let's start off here on uh, the number one and number three.
It's going to be eight. It's going to be x to the power. What's the power? I mean, it's not. There's not much to this. I mean, there's no math involved in that. Like, pay attention. Now, where there kind of really would be math involved would be a little bit like a number three. Now, for number three, there is a little bit of a paying attention aspect to it because you might say, whoa, 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 whoa. But look, that two is on the outside. We didn't even make that on Friday. The same thing is negative. So the paying attention part comes in as well, saying this is x to the 2 over 22, but now here's the math part. You can't think of like that. Why? For what? Yeah, you gotta reduce that. So this would be x to the 1 over 9. Normally I would go back to simplest radical form, but since the directions told me not to, the directions supersede everything. So this is the answer to number 3. Multiply it. If the bases are the same, what are you allowed to do to the exponents? What you're asking about this earlier? So we're allowed to add them. Let's do the next one. We want to do something in the simplest form, the generally simplest form. Okay? We want to avoid fraction exponents, fraction exponents, of course. We want to avoid negative exponents, but there's one other type of exponent that you should not be able to solve. Zero. 
But anywho, God, so since I am told to simplify, I want to go back into simplest radical form. Now, before I do that, I have to make sure that this fraction can't be reduced, which it can. So what's my index going to be? 10. And then, yes, I'm taking some liberties again and maybe skipping some steps. And if I have to go back and draw it out for you, I will. I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. Uh, just to, you have to make sure the index is a 10. If you don't mind, it's wrong. That means that in order to be able to break out of this jail, I need teams of 10. How many teams of 10 can I make 39 10? I have enough to make three teams of X's that can break out. How many X's will be left behind in the jail? How many? And now fraction, the 6 stays the same, the 17 is the same also. But on the second fraction, how does 2 become 6? What's the number 3? Times 3, so 15 times 3, 5 times 3, 15. Then when you subtract, you get x to the 2 over 6. And now we're done, right? Yeah, you can simplify, which gives you 1 over 3, but now we're done, right? Because it says simplify, you don't want to leave a fraction of an x one. What does that become as a radical? Cube root of any questions there? Right, I'm gonna leave out five, six. That's kind of the first one that we were doing. Uh, let's skip to uh, let's do number 14. When you have a power over power on number 14, what can you do? Multiply. Multiply. So 3 over 2 times uh, 7 over 3, the 3 can cancel, which leads you x to the 7 over 2. We're doing 14 now. Would that stay like that? I can't reduce the fraction, but what can I do? What type of radical would that be? This would be a square root, and without having to write down seven x's, how many teams of two can I have if I have seven or something? If I have seven x's, how many teams of two can I make? Three, so good. Three teams of x's, how many x's will be left behind? In this case, I don't really have a lot of stuff to do. I have to just convert it. Okay, it's pretty simple. By now, we don't know how to convert it to the two points. It's not so good. I just use this page as a quick little refresher from the quiz. Let's do 25. What do we call number 25? What is that called? Who said it? 
Sum of squares. What does the sum of squares look like in factor form for the second time today? Like the complex conjugates. So we're going to have a 4x, but instead of the 81, it will be a 9i. 4x, 9i, 1x plus and 1 is minus. Sum of squares. So it's the difference of squares and the conjugates. Yeah, I'll show you. 